Hey, what's going on everyone? Today I'm going to use these two clips to demonstrate the split object transition. So to get started, I'm going to place the playhead at the beginning of the second clip here. And then let's right click this clip and then in the menu, choose read time controls. So now let's simply click on this drop down and then let's choose freeze frame. So this will allow us to create a freeze frame while maintaining the rest of this clip. Now I only need about half a second of the freeze frame. So to come to that precise cut, I'm going to use the time code box here, typing plus 15. Uh, so 15 frames in my case is half a second. It could be different in yours, just depends on the timeline frame rate. So now as you can see, the play had moved over by about 15 frames. So let's make a cut here. Now let's bring back the read time controls for the rest of this clip and then come to the drop down. But this time let's choose remove freeze frame instead. So as you can see, we have right now half a second pause or freeze frame before the video begins. And this is a perfect setup for creating our transition. Now let's right click on our freeze frame here and then we're going to select a new fusion clip which will convert this ordinary clip into a fusion clip. So now let's just uh, bring our fusion clip right on top of the previous clip here and then we're going to close this gap and then let's take this newly created fusion clip here uh, straight to the fusion page. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do here is to create a replica of the media in node. And to do that, we're going to simply just copy and paste. Now let's bring in a polygon masking node. And before we connect it to any other node, we're going to just hop onto the preview screen here and then start to draw a mask around the object that you want to isolate from the rest of this clip. So in my case, it's going to be this cliff. And honestly, this mask doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, you know, the transition is so fast. It doesn't have to be a perfect mask for it to look good. And if you have the studio version and you can leverage the magic mask node, it's going to be even faster for you. But because I have this free version, so this process is going to be a bit tedious and time consuming. But once this is done, honestly, I promise you, you are like 70% there. So now let's just go ahead and connect this polygon node to the duplicated media in node, which is now the foreground. So the next thing we're going to do here is to bring a transform node and then just plug it after the foreground media in node. And there are so many different ways you can animate this object. You know, you can push it over to uh, the right out of the screen and then just bring it back in like this. Or what you can do is to, you know, push it towards the bottom and then bring it back like this. Or you can uh, push it over to the top and then bring it down. And then you can also move the or change the pivot point here first and then leverage the angle setting here to create sort of a swing object animation. So there are just so many different ways you can go about animating it. So in my case, I'm going to simply set a keyframe for the center setting here. And then I'm going to push it out of the screen over to the right. And then let's come to the middle of this clip. And then uh, I'm going to reset the center uh, setting here, the X setting here to 0 0.5. So now you will see that it's simply the object moving from the right hand side back into the screen. And uh, just like that, it's very simple, but it's perfect for what I'm trying to do. Now let's move on to our background here. We're not going to do any masking for the background. We're going to leave it and then let's just bring in a transform node and then place it right after. Now there are once again, many ways to animate this. You can bring it from the bottom to the top, top to the bottom or left to right or right to left. It just once again comes down to how you want to go about it. So in my case, I'm going to just move over one frame first and then set a keyframe for the center setting. Just push it down. Uh, towards the bottom out of the screen and then we're going to come to the end of this clip and then just bring it back up uh, by resetting the uh, y setting here to 0 0.5 so now you will see that uh, you know the foreground object will come in first and then immediately the background is going to come up from the bottom this is a well-coordinated movement in my opinion it's pretty seamless as well so now let's just take this back to the edit page let this render and you guys will see that this is pretty much it for our split object transition. It's very easy to do. And best of all, it looks absolutely fantastic. But before we wrap up, let's just hop back into the Fusion page one more time. Now for this background here, I think it will be even better to add some motion blur to it. So to do that, let's uh, come to the transform node here. Let's go to the settings tab instead. And then let's simply click on motion blur. 
Now let's bring up the quality setting there ever so slightly. Let's also adjust the shutter angle there slightly. But this is going to add such a nice smooth motion blur to the background movement. However, one problem that you can see is that the foreground object is also having this motion blur as well. It's also getting impacted. Now this might be okay for you, but I don't want this foreground object to have any motion blur at all. I only want the background to have the motion blur. So to get around this, we need to break up this chain. And to do that, we are going to bring a background node and then we're going to connect this transform node to this background node as a foreground. So this is going to form a new chain and then let's just uh, connect this new merge node back to the old one as a background. Now let's come to the background node here and then turn the alpha setting all the way down to zero. So this will allow us to form a new chain without affecting the animation itself. So now, as you can see, the foreground no longer has the motion blur and only the background does. And that's exactly what I want. So now let's just take this back to the edit page. Let this affect render. And you guys, this is pretty much it for this tutorial. Honestly, this is such a sick transition that you can easily create in the Fusion page. And uh, so, yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial. And as always, I will see you next time.